So for my last video, I built a pretty massive hempcrete speaker and for that I had to print some molds to make the parts. But as you can see, each of these parts are way larger than even my largest printer that I currently have, which is the Voron at this time. I didn't quite print these on the Tiny Boy, which has like an 8 by 8 centimeter build volume. I did print these on a Mark IV. But even if you have a printer that fits the size of your part, it can still make sense to split them up in the middle for printability or just to sort of share risks. If you have a huge printer with a huge print and something goes wrong, you lose a lot more print hours than if you have multiple smaller printers working away at like eight to nine hour prints and not prints that take weeks at a time. So today I'm gonna to show you four different ways to split up your parts in different software tools, which are all free, both for permanent joints and for joints that you have to take apart again. Right after a message from today's sponsor. Micro Swiss makes it easy for you to upgrade your printers and fix some of the flaws that would ruin an otherwise awesome machine. They've just announced the MicroSwiss Flowtech Hotend, starting with a model specifically made for the Creality K1 and K1 Max. The Flowtech nozzles provide a continuous melt zone, eliminating leaks and enabling one-handed cold nozzle swaps with no hot tightening required. And with its all-metal design, it expands the K1's working range up to 300 degrees Celsius while requiring no changes to the K1's firmware or build space. Check it out at the link below. And we're going to start with option number one, the butt joint. Just two flat, smooth, even sides butting up against each other. And you really want to use these with some adhesive to stick them together. I like construction adhesive uh, just out of the cartridge. That works pretty well, but it does take some time to dry. You can also use hot glue or 5 minute epoxy, JB Weld, whatever. Those all stick very well together on 3D prints. Now, of course, the big downside of butt joints is that they don't provide any sort of alignment between the parts. You can misalign them pretty easily and you're gonna still stick them together. But on the other hand, let's say one of these parts has some print issues, it warped or whatever, you're still gonna be able to stick them together and align them so that it looks good. Of course, this is also the simplest form of joint that you're gonna end up with if you split a part down the middle for printability. So you can place both those sides flat on the print bed where you split it. You get an even surface that sticks extremely well to the build plate versus having some sort of complex geometry that would need supports or other ways of you know, getting it printable. You split it down the middle and that makes it perfectly printable in many cases. You still have to watch out for overhangs. Okay, so let me show you a couple ways how to split parts up like this. One of the applications that often comes up is Microsoft's 3D Builder. I guess mostly for the reason that it used to come or still comes pre-installed on Windows. Um, it gives you some very basic viewing and editing tools like you can rotate, you can settle or place on build platform. Um, and also up here in the edit ribbon, you get the split tool. Um, which is, you know, exactly as you would expect. You basically get a plane that you can adjust. Um, in this case, this part, I want to split like that. So it's smaller and fits on my build platform. Um, you can say keep top, keep bottom, or keep both. And once you hit split, basically your part has now uh, been split, as you would expect, into two separate parts. And what's Pretty cool about this is that you can just drag these items and drag these over into your slicer and, you know, print them from there. But that is Microsoft 3D Builder. Basically, this is the extent that this is going to be useful. You get some other tools, you know, not that spectacular. Okay, moving on to Prusa Slicer. And this is much of the same story, just that you're staying inside the slicer from the start. So you get all the same tools. You get your rotate, move, adjust tools. Um, and then over here, you also get the cut tool. And this works in exactly the same way as we just saw in 3D Builder. You get a plane that you can adjust the angle and position off. And, you know, once you're happy with the position, uh, you select which objects you want to keep and how the slicer should finally place them. You know, either you keep them in place or you automatically stack them up if you split your part for printability reasons. You hit perform cut and there you go. Um, in this case, neither of these parts still fits on the, on the printer standing up like that. So I did print these laying down and you can just place them somehow like that. And there we go. Same idea, same exact idea, same process, just be staying within the slicer. By the way, if you're using a printer that is not supported by Prusa Slicer or you don't want to print straight out of Prusa Slicer, you can just use it as an editing tool and say uh, export as STL OBJ and, you know, export your files 
just like that. So you can you can literally just export anything you did in Prusa Slicer straight into any other tool. And lastly, if you want to do it straight in your CAD tool of choice, in this case, I designed this entire thing in Fusion 360, um, you can also do it here. And the benefit that you get here is that it can do it a lot more precisely because you can work off of your existing model geometry and you can place your splitting geometry exactly where you want it. So how I would do this uh, here in Fusion is I would say construct offset plane. I would pick my plane to where to the to the position that I want to split it at. And just for visualization, we can extend it and check where it's going to split the object. And then up here in the modify toolbar, um, if you don't have the split tool pinned to your quick bar, you can find it in the menu split body. You select which part you want to split. You select what you want to split it with and that's going to cut your part in half. And there you go. There's two separate parts that you can now export or use in your design uh, to further process. Next up, we've got butt joints with benefits, pins. So these pins are basically just inserts on a butt joint that help me align these parts together and they will stay in position whenever I clip them together. So that is a very easy way to make sure your alignment is perfect and it also helps you glue them together or in this case, because I just clamped them with some cutout uh, OSB, it also made sure these parts didn't slide around without any glue. With these parts, I used some custom springy pins just to help with alignment because these parts, you know, needed to be disassembled in a pretty weird way. But typically you can just use round pins or some other shaped inserts that can help you align these parts and still make them printable if you print with this side facing down. Okay, so let me show you how to do these in Fusion and in Prusa Slicer. Starting with Prusa Slicer, it is the same tool as before. You select your part, you select the cut tool over here, and you basically just adjust where your plane's supposed to hit. And then over here in the menu, you get the option to add connectors. Now, I do prefer the dowel connector. Um, the plug basically just adds little extensions to one side and then hold to the other. But the dowel is a separate insert part that prints separately. And you just, you know, position your camera so you can look at the cut surface and you cl just click where you want your connectors to be generated. Once you hit confirm connectors uh, and perform the cut, it automatically creates those uh, joining connectors right there in the center. Those are the dowels essentially uh, in their terminology uh, that basically connect those two parts together. And it did place the parts on the cut surface, which in this case was not how these parts were designed to fit together. But for other parts that might work just perfectly. Um, these parts were actually designed to fit on the on this flat side right there. Um, but obviously, you know, with these other parts on there, the build surface is pretty full. Um, now, one issue that I have with this is that it doesn't allow you to precisely place these connectors. So, for example, these parts um, are made so they would fit together, you know, on four sides identically. So that all these mating connectors on this side, on this other side, would just be interchangeable, essentially. And... Precise it does not quite give you the control for that. For simple stuff, this is perfectly adequate, but if you want to do more precise stuff, um, just like we saw with the butt connectors a second ago, uh, you're going to have to do it in CAD. Over here in Fusion, it starts with the same step. We split our part. I created a plane that uh, fits perfectly between these two. And there we go, we have two separate bodies. To create the mating part, the key essentially, um, I'm not gonna show you how to do pins, that would be pretty simple, you just drop your pin here. I'm gonna show you how to create a key. Basically, you just select your cut surface, um, you create a new sketch on here, let's make sure we actually draw on this. And we're first gonna project this cut surface, this might also be hidden in the menu. We project this surface, so we have it as geometry in the sketch. And then we can create an offset for this. And we're just gonna go in here like that. So we get two separate key pieces. And that's gonna be our shape for the two keys. Now with this, I can straight go in and say extrude. We're gonna create a new body. Um, this is gonna switch over in a second. We say symmetric. We go, I don't know, five millimeters, new body. And we're actually going to add a bit of a negative taper angle to this. So that's just going to make sure that we get a bit of tolerance once we fit these two parts together. So new body, hit OK, and now we have the keys on our parts. This is a separate body. Now to get the matching slot, 
Um, either you could subtract those keys uh, with a Boolean from this main object, but that is going to give you a zero tolerance fit and probably that's not going to go together. Uh, you could tweak it with offsets and stuff, but what you can also do is you can just reuse that same sketch and you just cut into your part without a taper. Um, and actually we're going to make sure to do symmetric and we're also going to cut the other side of this body, this one. Um, so we get the matching slots in both sides. So now both of these parts have the, the cutouts essentially for our keys. And that is a pretty cool way to create these keyed parts um, while also maintaining printability. So you could just place this part down onto this surface right here. It is still a closed perimeter and the surface in here that we inset is just going to be a straight bridge if we print it like that. So very easy to print still and you get a key that you know, gives you a lot of strength and very good alignment in the end. Next up, dovetails. And these really are a great alignment help with parts that need to fit together pretty well, but don't need like screws or pins to line them perfectly. If you can slide these together like this, then this is going to be a pretty good solution and they are very easy to generate in Prusa Slicer. Now these I did glue together, so they are pretty permanently bonded with some construction adhesive. Let me see if I can get these apart actually. There we go, there's one of them. Yeah, this one I don't think is coming apart, but we have one here. So the dovetail for the most part is an alignment help, but it also does add some mechanical strength because you are keying these parts together. These have some adhesive on them so they don't fit perfectly well, but there we go. There is the part, um, you can just you know hang them off of the side. It does add a good bit of strength because your parts are now keyed together essentially. Of course, if you are splitting up your parts to make them printable on a smaller machine, you do lose the ability to print them like that on the cut surface because one of the sides protrudes. The other side, I guess you could print with the cut side facing down, but of course you do still have a rather large bridge that now needs spanning, but it would still work as a printable option. Now I'm going to show you how to do these dovetails in Prusa Slicer, but if you take it to something like Fusion, you can use any sort of joint and in fact, any sort of wood joint would work, even the, the super complex complicated Japanese joinery will work on 3D prints and there are plenty of videos showing you that just for novelty but you can basically cut anything into these parts and use them for strength as well. All right let me show you how these are done. Starting in Prusa Slicer again all we have to do is to select our cut tool and switch it from planar to dovetail and this you know we're going to see it a bit better once we position this um, basically works the exact same as the other cut tool but you can see our cutout is going to be that dovetail. Now you do get a bunch of adjustment options, um, the tolerance for the depth and width. Uh, 0.1 did work pretty well for me, but you can go a bit closer if you want a better fit. And also you can adjust the groove angle to add a bit of taper, which is what I did with my parts. The shallower that taper angle is, the more the parts are going to jam together. Um, and you know, the the wider it's going to be, the easier it will be to assemble. By the way, if you want this to be wider and you've already maxed out the width on the setting here, you can also just lower your cut geometry and it is going to make it wider as well. So same as before, um, basically you, you position your cut, uh, you hit perform cut and that's it. There's our, let me just select this one. There's our cut part with the dovetails cut into it. And if you want to do a very similar dovetail in Fusion, it's actually rather simple. So we have our whole part again, starting with that. Um, all we need is a planar surface. Thankfully, I've already planned for this and this is the surface that's going to stick to the bed that is nice and flat. We create a sketch on that. And I'm just going to do a very quick and dirty dovetail here. Doesn't actually need to be perfect and that's good enough. So now we can do an extrude. And you got to make sure that you switch it from the extrude to the thin extrude feature um, because that allows you to select this line here. And all we have to do is push it through the part. Come on, there we go. Um, now, what the thin extrude feature allows us to do is to say, well, we want to cut through it and it allows us to say how much we want to cut away. So if you want that same tolerance of 0 0.1 millimeters, um, now we get a 0 0.1 millimeter slot cut through our part. You can also add a taper angle, um, just like in Prusa Slicer, let's do minus five. And you can see that tapers nicely together and that's going to jam the parts together. Hit OK. And there we go. Now we have two bodies that are nicely cut away from each other and with a 0.1 millimeter tolerance, they're going to fit together very, very nicely. And lastly, screws. 
So, of course, you're going to need a through hole side. You to just poke your screws through. And a threaded side in one other part. And basically, you just pop them through, you screw them together. And there you go. That is a very solid, well-aligned connection. So of course, from an engineering standpoint, screws are not meant to be precision alignment features because the screw itself is not a precision part. It really is just meant to pull two parts together. But honestly, in the context of 3D printing, screws are plenty good enough for aligning two parts together, especially considering, you know, you have some tolerance with the parts themselves as well. And if you choose a screw size that is large enough, like this is M8, um, you can actually directly tap into your 3D printed parts, and that is gonna make for a very, very strong fit, stronger in most cases than the rest of the part itself. So this is cool because you can just tap your part or print the threads directly that works with these sizes as well. It's an assembly method that is very easy to take apart. You just unscrew the screw and that's it, unless you've glued it. Um, and it also doesn't add any protrusions that would interfere with the part fitting onto your print surface. So this is a mating option that for now you can really only do in CAD though. Thinking about it, you could use the same methods in a slicer. But yeah, let me show you how these mates are done in Fusion 360. So these two parts that we just looked at already have some screw connectors in the back here. And that's actually what I used for mating these parts it worked perfectly. Fusion does have a hole tool and, you know, it does give you something like a counter bore hole. You can also make them threaded or tapped, but this tool simply, you know, it doesn't quite give you the flexibility to create a through hole. Um, which is what we have on this part right here, and a tapped side at the same time. You can only really cut one part, and if you want to do multiple, it, it gets pretty tedious. So let me show you an alternative way um, that you can customize pretty well, and that makes doing multiple threaded holes like this very, very simple. So I'm just creating myself a offset plane here exactly where our screw connection is going to run through. I'm going to start a new sketch on this plane, and then I'm just gonna sketch out the first screw that I want. So we're gonna do some clearance up top and the threaded portion in the bottom. So I've just mentioned this in a way that the head of the screw nicely sinks into the top part and that the bottom part that we actually want to thread into has an eight millimeter hole. Um, that's because I'm actually gonna model threads in a second here, but if you wanted to tap threads into your part, of course, you would need to make this a bit smaller for M8, that would be a 6.8 millimeter hole. Again, since we're actually gonna print the threads, this is gonna be eight millimeters, and you're gonna see why in a second. Um, for now though, all we're gonna do is we're gonna revolve this and create our basically uh, cutout shape for this screw. There we go. With this cutout shape done, I do want to add the threads. Um, this is what we're going to cut out of the actual part. And we're going to check model here in the threading tool. This is going to be a bit too tight. For that, you just grab the modify and scale tool. You select a part, select non-uniform. And what is this? This is Z and Y. And you just add I don't know, 5% to the scale, and that is gonna give you a much better clearance on the threads. And because we have cut a male thread into our tool that we're cutting out of the part, we've essentially created a zero tolerance or a zero clearance fit, which of course is not gonna work. And with that scale, it just has a bit of clearance in there. Since we do want about five screws here, um, I'm just gonna do a linear pattern. I'm gonna do this along this axis right here. Like so, and we're gonna do five. And now we just need to use our newly created screw forms to cut out um, holes from each of the halves. For the first one, you have to do keep tools so you can reuse them for the second cut operation. But since we modeled it exactly onto our parting line, uh, you can see we get the clearance hole into our top part and then the thread starts at the bottom. So keep tools and then we do another cut and there we go. There's our threaded printable hole and the matching clearance hole on the top side. And if we hide one of these, you can see the thread just extends into the bottom part and the clearance hole just extends into the top. So that's how I like to do threads. Directly printing the threads works 
at about uh, an M6 or a, a quarter inch 20. Um, anything smaller than that, your printer is not going to reproduce. So for that, you will need to create basically a tap size hole, but make sure to give yourself plenty of wall thickness. So don't make that hole too small or otherwise your tap will simply cut through all your perimeters and you'll be left with just info, which obviously isn't gonna be particularly strong. Um, but for larger sizes, this works well. Um, for an M8, I maybe wouldn't use a 6.8 millimeter hole, which is the regular tapping size, and maybe would use a 7.5, because that is still going to be plenty strong um, in plastic. There we have it, four different mating options for your parts. I hope there was one in there that was right for your project, or at least it inspired you to, you know, come up with your own mating solutions that you can draw up in CAD or even implement in your slicer. So, hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe. Uh, you can support the channel through Patreon. By the way, thank you to all the patrons who are supporting me right now. You can be one of them if you want to. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Keep on making and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.